Goldman Sachs is seen on the street and around the world as a white shoe firm that caters only to the rich and powerful. But in a story today from our CNBC.com banking reporter Hugh Son, we found out that the firm is about to dip into the sub subprime lending market with its partnership with Apple on the Apple Card. Here to explain the move is the writer of today's piece. The person who broke that story is Hugh Son. Tell us about it, Hugh. What is Goldman looking to do? Hi, Scott. So they're casting an unexpectedly wide net in their search for customers for this new Apple Card. So what we found is that people with FICO scores of you know, low 600s, even in the 500s, uh, we just realized, are actually getting this card. And it only takes two minutes to get an application in and get a response. So as those answers are coming in, people are posting their, their results online, and it's, it's pretty interesting to watch. It, it sounds to me like if you say, well, why is Goldman doing this? They probably want a lot of customers, yeah. and they want a lot of customers as quickly as possible. This is a mass market product for them. I mean, I think, you know, up to this day, they have Marcus, somewhere like 4 million customers. And, you know, with the fact that there's about 100 million U.S. iPhone users in this country, I mean, this could be an order of magnitude larger product for them. So they're looking to scale. They're looking to scale up fast. And they're looking to sort of change the narrative that this is not just, uh, you know, a New York investment bank that's tethered to, you know, trading and, and the slowdown in trading, but this is a fast-growing, uh, you know, uh, bank with exposure to some big, big retail markets. Let's, let's be clear and careful, too, uh, you know, based on your reporting. It's not like Goldman is, is giving $25,000 or $35,000 or $50,000 credit limits to people yeah. with, you know, subprime FICO scores. It's far, far different than that. Yeah, you talk to Goldman guys, they say, look, risk is in our DNA. We know risk, okay? We've done it for decades, forever on the institutional side. So if you look at the, some of the people who are sort of more marginal credits, they're getting something like $750 uh, credit limits, $250 credit limits. You can't even buy an iPhone with that, uh, at least a new one. And so, you know, they, they also have the highest APRs, so they're going to get compensated for that risk a little bit. And I think basically if you believe that this is a financial product, that is, uh, you know, that leads to better financial outcomes for their users, you should actually want some of these people to have this card. And if you're Apple, I mean, we put up a graphic there that showed there's 100 million plus U.S. iPhone users. You want as many of them to have access to this card yeah. as possible, right? So the mandate from early on, it, regardless of who was the bank partner on this, was that they wanted as many of their user base, iPhone user install base, to be, to be using this card and have it as their default, their primary card. And so in that population of 100 million, as you said, there's going to be people who are in the whole spectrum of, of credit range. So, I mean, I think basically it shows that they, they, and this, by the way, goes back to even during the Steve Jobs era. So I talked to somebody who was at Capital One back in the late 90s, and he said, you know, Steve Jobs in their early talks to do a potential Apple card back then, he didn't want to say, he didn't want to say no to any of his clients, any of the, any of the customers at the time.